Hello, welcome to the third lesson in the BI validator use case of data ops suite. In the first two lessons, we covered the sources on the different BI tools that we cover. And of course, the other data sources that the application covers inherently, how to set these up, how to pull data sets and other aspects out. In the second lesson, we actually used that, looked at some use cases where we compared the KPIs and metrics from reports against data sets. And of course, after the application of filters and parameters and other systems. And the second example we covered mainly was with regards to regression and PDF to PDF comparisons. So with that, we have covered the base use cases, and this will be hopefully the final lessons within the BI validator system where we cover automation, pipelines, and scheduling in a great extent. So what we mean by automation in this case is that if you're working with a large scale project, so you work with about entire workbooks or entire dashboards, creating the test cases one by one might be cumbersome. cumbersome. As you might see, well, we have just a few clicks to create these use cases, but that too might be one click too many. So to help the users with that, what we have is generation of automatic, uh, automatic generation of test cases as a whole. So here, let me create a brand new folder. Let's call it BI Val. Now I'm going to go into options and I'm going to click generate BI data flows. So this is our use case, which can help the end users generate a wide variety of test cases in bulk. So. Here, the test case that I want to work with is maybe regression or upgrade. So what I mean by that is, well, firstly, let's select BI Val as our upgrade. Let's give them a very appropriate prefix. This will be the prefix given to all the test cases as now we'll be generating test cases in bulk. Let's go with the none environment. Uh, there's no need for tags, but we can put Power BI tags for now as that's what we are going for. And let's go for a regression tag as well as that's what we'll be doing right now. So in the validation type, you have to choose what type of test case you're working with. In this particular use case, I'll be working with creation of regression test cases, but you can just as easily define BI sources and upgrade test cases as well. The main gist here is that instead of defining your connection here one by one and then defining your use cases, uh, so you, you, instead of creating a test case one by one, you create test cases in bulk. So the first step is, of course, importing those specific reports. And then the next step is to, well, just create the use cases. So now I've just ensured that I'm creating regression test cases for this workspace, or sorry, this specific report. And let's make sure we do the same for our other specific reports as well. Let's see if we can do across systems. So I'm using shift key here to select multiple reports. And now I've created a regression test case for multiple reports. You can do the same for thousands of test cases as well. In fact, you can pick the entire workspace itself. I've selected specific uh, workspaces or reports for, for and sake of example. The next thing, of course, is since we do work with filters, if you want to define filters or if you want to define the exact bookmark on which you want to run this test cases, you can do it right here on a filter, sorry, on a report to report basis. So here, take for example, if I want to run this particular test case, but I want to run this test case after this bookmark where I've selected a specific filter. So in this particular case, I'll run capture bookmark. And so whenever we run this particular regression use case, this particular bookmark will be deployed to this report before running it. If I want to say revert this, if I want, if I don't want to do this, I'll just, you know, re click back, we have everything back and then I'll capture the bookmark once again. So now when I run this particular test case, no filters or other aspects will be applied. Depending on your use case, you can do this accordingly. And as discussed previously, if you want to work with dynamic filters, all you have to do is go into the filters page right here. You'll see a similar system within Tableau as well, where instead of filters in a page like this, you'll have them alongside parameters, worksheets, and of course, filters. And since Power BI gives us filters on multiple levels, you can choose at which level you would want these filters, at a report level, page level, or a visual level. In this particular example, we have filters at a visual level, and so we can present them right here. And of course, these work with the parameters that we have defined. It can be global parameters or inbuilt parameters as well. For our example, we will skip all of these ahead. As again, our main basis is with regards to automation, and this can be done when we are trying to tweak our test cases as well. As once we get to options and generate, as you'll see, let's go ahead with opacity about 0.5 so that we can actually, 0.4, so we can actually see it. And let's make sure we're doing appearance as well here. Now let's go to generate and let's generate our test cases. So you see what we have done is we have generated three test cases, but within each of those test cases, we have generated specific test case for each and every page that we have selected. 
And in this page, you will see that, yes, all the test cases that we had defined are already present and loaded in. This was a test case. As you remember, we did not select bookmark. That's why this was not loaded in. But if you go to properties, if you see the comparison methods, we see we do have that exact opacity and color that we had selected earlier. Now, of course, if I want to run all of these test cases all together, and once again, before we go to that, sorry, if you want to parameterize, add some specific parameters, or if you want to change the test case, all these test cases are editable. Here, we'll move on with the assumption that there is no other change required. And now moving on to the main aspect, which is, well, now that I've defined this multiple test cases, and if I go to my folder right now, let's go to bi val, you'll see I have three test cases created. Each of them have at least uh, three or four test uh, report checks or regression tests within them. Well, how do I validate this? Well, for that, we have pipelines. So let's open a test pipeline to illustrate what we're discussing here. Well, pipelines are a way for the end user to assimilate or basically create a bunch of test cases and with dependencies associated with them and run them one after the other or in parallel or in sequence or with any kind of conditional clause as they might choose to run. That's the main gist of pipelines. It's a way for the end user to group test cases, define how test cases will be run. And of course, if there's going to be iteration or other systems present in the mix. The current test case that you see, the, the, sorry, the current uh, pipeline that you see has a data quality monitor test case followed by a shell script and a data flow that runs in parallel. And after that, we are running some validations on some XML and JSON files. So that's a pretty straightforward pipeline. But as you will notice, we have a lot more test cases present right there. So let's go through one, go through all of them one by one. Data flow is basically the test cases that we have generated earlier. That's what we saw in data flows. The name is analogous and similar to test cases itself. So you can consider them one and the same. To add a test case, let's create a brand new pipeline for this. Let's call it BI bulk. Oh, I believe I did not do that right. Let's call this BI bulk. Let's save this. There we go. I had closed that particular window. So now let's get back. If you want to add a test case, all you have to do is select the entire test case you're working with. Let's go for a Power BI test case here. That should be pretty straightforward. So there we go. And again, you get to choose the genders right here. And this will come in handy. So this gender was a parameter in our test case. And of course, you can add parameters specifically as well. Here you will see that here it's asking us for a value here. Now let's keep our hold on this because this will become very important in one of the upcoming uh, palettes, uh, upcoming tasks. To choose what test case runs after when, you just have to define a line right there and you're good to go. And DB flows are very similar to that, except this is a very ETL specific function, so we will not get into it. The same thing with EMR and Databricks. These specific uh, tasks are actually there to ensure you can basically manage or de deploy a specific a set of clusters. Now, the main aspect here is for you to manage the performance of your system. Since the application can be installed directly onto your infrastructure itself, you would like to deploy certain scaling probability, uh, scaling possibilities and, of course, a good amount of cluster management as well. And that's why we have these tasks even. For a BI validation, these aren't terribly important, so we'll be skipping those. And the same thing with Databricks as well. As you'll see, this is all with regards to managing a particular cluster. So we'll skip this one. A custom task is something specific. So the main gist here is that if you want to run a command line batch or if you want to run, uh, run a shell command or bash command within the application itself, you can do that. You can do this to call scripts within your server. You can run basic commands as well. This is basically a back and forth. An example that I've seen where we have used a custom task is where the application is used not just for validation of migration of files. So one of our clients actually has a setup where they get their files in a gunzipped format from their uh, clients or like from the vendors and they have to unzip it and attach the header files again as csvs and then push them forward and so instead of doing that at their end they just understood that since they're going to be validating the system at their end they will perform the migration as well as this unzipping and everything using some custom shell scripts at their end itself and so that's what we have here as our custom tasks so of course, you can do use it for your specific use cases and needs as well. Data quality nodes and data quality node one rule once again is something specific to data quality monitoring. It's a completely different tool set which we will cover in separate lessons. TDM again is a different task altogether. This actually covers synthetic data generation. For more information, you can feel free to connect with us on how exactly that works. 
But benchmark report is something that we do want to talk here. So what benchmarking basically does is that it ensures that if you're looking at regression, you see the way regression works, just to repeat myself here, is that if you have a particular report or a set of reports, which you do not want any changes to you know, appear in, basically, if you have a report and you are expecting some changes, unintended changes in the report, well, because, well, Tableau is upgrading or there are some transformation uh, ETL changes that are happening within your pipeline. And historically, you've seen that these uh, ETL pipeline changes usually have unintended effects on your report. So if you want to ensure that you can catch this unintended effects on your report day in, day out through upgrades and other aspects as well, you use regression. And the main aspect of regression is that instead of comparing two distinct reports against each other, it's going to look at the same report except two versions of the report. The original report which was, which was benchmarked, so that is the source of truth, versus the latest version of the report. So in this particular, and this is again, this is all something that we've covered within our previous lesson. So uh, feel free to look into that specific lesson as well. But the main gist of the benchmark report task is to ensure that you can schedule this particular aspect as well. So, you know, of course, if you're working with benchmarks, your benchmarks can only be correct for a set cadence. You know, your particular report can be correct and can be the source of truth maybe for a week, two weeks max, depending on your use cases. So if you want to ensure that your benchmarking is also being done in a red, uh, regular scheduler, scheduled manner, you can add them within your pipeline right there. So that's what uh, this particular system works with. So here in this case, I can basically say yes. Whenever you're in this particular test case, if there are any uh, regression test cases, the application will run the benchmark for that test case here. And once again, all I have to do is if you want, if I want to add it in parallel, well, just add it like this. If I want it to run after this particular test case, let's add another condition. So in this particular case, the test cases work. Now let's look at one of the most important uh, test case or in this case, in this case, task of pipelines, which is iteration. So if you remember earlier within our data flow, we had this aspect of parameters being given proper values and we can choose those values here. Well, if you are working with a complex use case where you have multiple parameters or multiple filters or slicers within your Tableau or Power BI report. And well, based on the previous lesson, you've already parameterized them. But now the main just resides as well. I want to you know, apply configuration A. Configuration A has filter value X, filter second value Y, and the other filters are selected accordingly. So you have this entire set of files. Let me illustrate more on what I'm discussing here. So assume you have a specific Tableau report, which looks a little like this. Oh, let's open a Tableau report and let's open a snapshot. So it looks a little like this, where you have this corresponding Tableau report, and this is the filter condition. It has a start date and end date. It's a range of dates. And in this particular use case, we'll be hypersimplifying things. So here, the exact use case is, well, the order date or the start and end date should be parameterized. And so I've done that. I've already parameterized my start and end date right here. And I've also done the parameterization in my SQL. So when I'm aggregating my system, I've created a where condition which looks at this specifically. Now, now that we have done this exact thing, the next aspect comes in. Well, of course, I'm not going to just run this test case for Q1 and then manually go in, change the data sets for Q2 and Q3 and so on and so forth. So how do I do this? Well, what the application expects from you, and this is currently we are actually building a feature where this thing will be done automatically as well. But as of now, since uh, the since you know you guys know your data sets better than us in this case of obviously, what we expect of the user is a basic configuration file. This could be a file, this could be a view, this could be an API connection, anything. A data set that looks like this, which has the configuration, configuration name basically, and the values for each and every different parameter. So here I'm going with H1, H2, then the next year H1, H2, so on and so forth. Where I'm going from 2011 to 2012 to 2013, 2014, so on and so forth. So now what I want to do is that these are the values for my filters and I want to apply configuration one, then configuration two, then configuration three and apply all the specific uh, values for each and every parameter that I've worked with. So to do that, let's go back to pipelines. Let's go to BI bulk. You'll notice all the test cases that I put are not present here because I did not save or run my system. So if you want to ensure that your uh, tasks or you know tasks or in this case, your progress is being saved, please do that. And here it's going to ask me if I want to have static parameters or dynamic. So of course, if I'm working with static, and let's go ahead with uh, this particular use case, if I want to have it st static, what I can do is instead of start dates right here, I can just define a test case like this, where I have S1, C1, S2, C2, and so on and so forth. And these will be the parameters for my system. 
Alternatively, what I can do is go for dynamic systems. Now, when I go for dynamic, it's going to ask me what is the exact configuration data set. And all I have to do is plug in the configuration data set. As you notice in the previous uh, screen, we had a plugin which actually does this specifically. And now instead of having start date and end date, what I would like to do is just define this as param1 and param2. In this case, param2. So what I'm doing now is ensuring that when I'm running this particular test case, it's going to be run iteratively. So let's go back and let's uh, take a you know, quick background of what we have done and let's see the entire system in action. I have a test case. The test case in question is this, where I have parameterized my start date and end date. And these parameterizations are applied to my query of my aggregate, as you see. And these parameters are also applied to my Tableau report. So let's go to results real quick. I mean, for the take sake of time, we won't open Tableau right now. These are being applied right here as well, as you can see, start date and end date. Now, since I want to work on it dynamically, what I'll do is I'll provide the data of suite a basic file. The file is in this format where it has the configuration name. It has the values for parameter one, the start date and values for parameter two, which is the end date. Now this file is picked up from a CSV AWS S3 location, but it can be from any specific location. The only thing left once I load this data set is to call a basic plugin. And here I'll talk a bit more about plugin towards the end of this lesson. But basically call the specific plugin out here, get into options and choose what the exact data set name will be. You'll notice this is the exact data set name we plugged within our iteration pipeline. And now if I go back to pipelines, I have this test case already created. You'll notice that this is how the application looks where I have dollar sign, curly brackets, param1. This is what we had within our columns as well right here. And these are our different parameters that we have defined within our system. And now if I look at the run history, since we won't waste time with running this exactly right now, you'll see in the task run details, the application has been run multiple times and each time it has been run for a specific set of parameters. And this is what we mean when we want to apply specific parameters, you can do this to ensure that you're testing your uh, validating your reports, not just at an overall level, but also at a granular level. So it's pretty handy trick to know and part of a very deep uh, test case validation within BI validation as a whole. So that is more or less the basic gist of pipelines. Uh, the last few topics that we'll quickly cover up are, of course, with regards to schedulers. So a scheduler is basically where you can choose to schedule either a task or basic test case, entire pipelines, where you can choose to purge run histories and other aspects as well. So that's basic scheduling, nothing too crazy out there. We ask our end users to actually work with this as accordingly. Other aspects are whenever you run this particular test case, I do want to make sure people are aware of this, is that you see this particular run window, this is going to run the test case in something we call as a developer mode. So what we mean by developer mode is that it's not an actual production run. So we won't store the results. If you want to store the results or if you want something to be defined as a production run or something which is a true run, you actually you know, click on run data flows. And in that case, all the aspects are being saved in the history. So if I go back to my data flows right here, if I go to recent runs, you'll notice that if you have ever run a particular system, properly in the sense that you have a true run or a production run there, the application will keep track of the run history for that across multiple runs. So let's uh, open up, uh, let's open up a Tableau result for now. Yeah, let's go to Tableau and let's filter Tableau systems and let's go for iterative use cases itself. So oh, apologies, yeah, iterative use case. So here you will see we are actually focusing on some specific run. So if I go back to runs, you'll see the application has kept track of multiple runs through and through within its system. And each time when we run the specific system, it has kept track of the parameters we had used at that particular time. Here we see it's a parameter one and two. And of course, it also keeps track of the runtime files if they are present any. And of course, if there's a specific report associated with them. So before I, uh, you know, let me clear out some doubts that you might have is that, you know, if we have, if you go to the specific use case, you will notice that if we go to run history, this is where we also have those test cases present. Well, yes, the application is going to keep a copy of the entire pipeline itself, and it's also going to keep a copy of the entire test case. So here you will see that this particular run is, sorry, this particular run that was open in a different window actually pertains to a specific use case. Right, it's opening in a separate, let's share this tab instead. There we go. Yeah, so in this case, we are looking at this specific tab as well. And here you'll notice that yes, this data comparison has failed, but if, and of course there's a reporting section associated with that as well. 
But if I go to the specific run history, you'll see that yes, those specific parameters were being applied. Start date, end date was not param1, param2, but that exact parameter that we were discussing. So in this case, we were looking at the entire report in this case. And once again, if you're working with anything specific, there are two types of reports being created. One type of report is a downloadable report. I will showcase that shortly. The second type of report is a report that's generated. Let's share this tab instead. Yeah, let's that, that, that particular report is actually a customizable report, which is infinitely zoomable. So this particular report, you see uh, the data sets are present at a much better level. In fact, let me open up a Power BI report since we have been sticking to Tableau for so long. Let's go to Power BI and open up one of those use cases there. So let's open up Power BI data comparison. Let's go to run history right there. And once again, you'll see all the report sections right there. And let's go to report. So here you'll notice that the application actually keeps track of the act, each and every node, how long it took to run. And of course, if you want to go back and see what that specific report looked like, you can always go back and open the snapshot to see what the report looked like when this particular test case was ran. So in this specific use case, we see that these were the test data sets pulled from Power BI. This was the output from our DIM customer, as you see. And of course, what the aggregate looked like. And if something failed, why exactly did it fail? Well, in this case, it failed for a very specific reason that there were issues within the data set. There was one record which was incorrect with a 0.2% mismatch. And these were the matched records and other aspects. The reporting section here is, well, quite customizable to a great degree as well. As you might see, you can add chart widgets, you can add data widgets, you can add shared widgets. In fact, you can even remove or change the layout of this entire reporting pipeline to the point that you can create your very own reports. So if I go to the reporting section, you'll see that you can create your very own reporting section within the application itself from scratch. The best way to do it is that if you have a specific a need where managerial folks or anyone from management or, or from leadership or anyone who wants to actually just take an overall look at the entire system, just say, hey, what does my BI report validation looks like from an overall system? Well, you can just show them this particular uh, reporting section and you will be good to go. This can also house specifics of entire pipelines as well, as you see, and a lot more. We implore our uh, end users to actually look into the system further and explore. So yeah, uh, the last thing I would just like to end on, and again, this is going to be an open ending for our end users, is to definitely explore something called plugins. So the, since the application does have Python and Scala co Spark coding from the get-go, you can, of course, create code components. But creation of code components implies that you have to copy that particular code from place to place between test cases. And it might not be the best thing to do, considering you're working with code. And many times, you might not have the bandwidth to have the multiple developers within the system. So for that, we actually have something called plugins. And again, we highly expect our end users to get into the specific use, uh, use case, as you might notice, that you can deploy any specific kind of code. So this is pretty straightforward. But let's pick up a very basic example. So say you want to automate something, which is like in case there are differences found between your report and your data set, you want to automatically send out a JIRA ticket. Maybe you want to send out a JIRA ticket with the compilation of all the issues. And you want to do this in an automated fashion. Obviously, you can create code for this using requests uh, and JSON libraries within Python. But the main aspect is copying this code or maybe reusing this code might be a hassle. Well, that's where the application shines. You see, an end developer can come in and deploy the code once. But what the end user is going to see is, well, all they'll see are these parameters. So it's pretty straightforward what happens in this particular point. Uh, the end, the developer actually defines what parameters they need for this particular code to run, if there are some data sets they need for this code to run as well. And then they define this run code. In the same case, let's take for, say, you want a Teams notification instead. Teams usually requires just a webhook URL to work. So in this case, a webhook URL should be fine. And correspondingly, the code has been updated accordingly. So if I go back, let's say there's a completely different type of test case, which is you have address data sets and you would like to actually enrich them. So in this particular use case, or oh, you don't need parameters, you know exactly where this particular data set is coming from. So you don't even need this particular test case. So how does this look from an end user perspective? Well, let's just open up a test case and showcase what this looks like. So here, if I go into plugins and say I want to raise a Jira ticket, well, we saw the code, but what do you think you will see here? Well, here you will only see the parameters that the end user needs. Nothing of the from the code is specifically here. And this makes it very easy for any kind of integration to be easily imported within the product. You will never have to wait for a product release for these type of features. In the same way, if I want to now switch over and say, make a Teams notification, that's all I have to do. 
the options are updated automatically. And so you will not have to maintain code in this particular system. Of course, this is just a tease. We would like our end users to actually get into the documentation, try to play with the plugin system as a whole. And of course, if you want to test out plugins in a sandbox where you might not have access to admin sections, feel free to use the code component. And it's pretty identical and it has the Python and so the same aspects present here, except this will be local to your test case and not to the entire system as a whole. That being said, once the application is within your system or once you do have admin privileges within the application on any system, you can create your very own plugins as well. Last thing, and this is again for end developers only, is the application does have a great amount of externalized APIs. So if you want to say create test cases from scratch, you know, not using the UI, but using code, maybe you want to change parameters, maybe you want to run test cases, maybe you want to run pipelines as well in an automated fashion. Maybe you want to run it using Jenkins, using CLI commands or other aspects. The application does have a great amount of externalized APIs that you will find within the online help and support portal. With that, we basically conclude the BI validator, uh, BI validation certification test case. I believe there should be a small exam or a questionnaire that follows this particular lesson in which we run a basic set of tests to ensure that this particular test cases or the functionalities have been passed through to, uh, to the end user or to you specifically. And we wish you luck for that particular test. It should be relatively easy. But yeah, thanks a lot for choosing data gaps, data gaps and Feel free to message us at any point in case of any questions or any further queries.